Welcome to the Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. Today, our lesson is on understanding square roots. Our objectives today are that you will find positive and negative square roots, you will evaluate expressions involving square roots, and you will use square roots to solve equations. The question I want you thinking about today as we go through the lesson is how can you use what you know about exponents to evaluate square roots. So first let's talk about what is a square root. A square root of a number is a value that when multiplied by itself is equal to the value under the square root symbol. So here we have the square root of 16. We call this symbol in math the radical. The value underneath the radical is the radicand. Here are some facts about square roots. Every positive value has two square roots, a positive and a negative square root. Perfect squares have integer values. Non-perfect squares or imperfect squares are irrational and are non-terminating decimals without a pattern. You'll need a calculator to evaluate a non-perfect square, and we will learn more on how to approximate a non-perfect square in a future lesson. So my next video that I post will be about how to do that. So today we're going to focus on perfect squares, meaning that you can find the square root of a number just by using math facts. Non-perfect squares you will learn about in a future lesson. Let's talk about square and square root relationship. They are, have an inverse relationship. So we're talking about squaring a number using exponents and then square root in today's lesson. If we square a number, so zero squared, that means right here, taking that exponent, take your base and multiply it by itself. So two zeros, zero times zero represents zero squared. Zero times zero equals zero. When we talk about the square root, the square root of zero, we want to know what number multiplied by itself equals zero. So we come back over here, zero times zero is equal to zero. So therefore, the square root is zero. So we can see that zero squared is zero, and the square root of zero is also zero. We have one squared. We're gonna see a pattern here. One squared is one times one, which equals one. The square root of one, one times one is one, therefore the square root is one. So we're looking for a single number that when multiplied by itself equals our radicand. Two squared, two times two, which is four. So therefore the square root of four is two because two multiplied by itself is four and there's our radicand. So two squared is four and the square root of four is two. Three squared is three times three, which is nine. The square root of nine is three times three, so therefore the square root is three. Four squared is four times four, which equals 16. So therefore, the square root of 16 is four times four, and the square root is four. So another way of looking at this later on in your math career, you'll also learn that the square root could also be expressed with an exponent of one half. Where what you're doing is you're taking half of factors out from underneath. So we have two factors and the square root of one is one. We also have two roots to talk about. Every square root has a positive and a negative root. So if we have the square root of four, we know that two times two is equal to four, therefore the square root of four is two. However, the square root of four can also be represented by negative two times negative two because it's four. 
a negative multiplied by a negative is a positive. So since negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4, the square root of 4 could also be negative 2. So be careful with your directions. They will be very important. You may be asked to find both roots. You may be asked to find the positive root. You might be asked to find the negative root. But make sure you are reading your directions carefully. Let's talk about negative radicands. The square root of a negative number is not part of the real number family. The square root of a negative number is what we call an imaginary number. We learn about imaginary numbers in high school. So it's not that you can't find the square root of a negative number. It's not a real number. And in eighth grade, we only work with real numbers. So now let's practice. I would like you to find the square root or roots of 81. Please pause the video now and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So the square root of 81 is equivalent to the square root of 9 times 9. Since 9 multiplied by itself equals the radicand 81, then we know the square root of 81 is equal to 9. It says plural roots, so we also know that negative 9 multiplied by negative 9 is positive 81. So again, by definition, any number multiplied by itself equal to that radicand, it's equal to negative 9. So we have two roots. Here's one way to express that answer. We call this positive and negative. So there's a plus sign and a negative sign here indicating two values, a positive 9 and a negative 9. You can use this, or you can just simply say 9 and negative 9. Your turn. Go ahead and find the square root of negative square root of 49. Come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So let's see how you did with this. This is negative, the value of the square root of 49. You could also read this as negative 1 multiplied by the square root of 49. We know that 49 is 7 times 7. Therefore, the square root is 7. Negative 1 times 7 is negative 7. Your turn. Go ahead and find the positive square root of 4 ninths. Pause and come back and hit play when you're ready. Welcome back. So we're going to find the square root of our numerator and the square root of our denominator. We have the square root of 4 would be square root of 2 times 2. The denominator, 9, is the square root of 3 times 3. So we know that we have 2 over 3. If you saw this a different way, you might have said to yourself, wow, 2 thirds times 2 thirds is 4 ninths. So there you have the square root. Remember, they only asked us to find the positive. Now let's evaluate an expression with the square root symbol. When you're doing order of operations, square roots fall in the same category as exponents. So when we talk about PEMDAS, parentheses first, there are no parentheses, then you clear exponents. So we're going to do the square root first. So that's the first thing we need to evaluate. And the square root of 100, I know that 10 times 10 is 100. So therefore, the square root of 100 is 10. Now the next thing I need to do is multiply and divide in order from left to right. So I'm going to do 5 times 10, which is 50. Now I'm ready to add 6 plus 50 is 56. Your turn. Go ahead and pause, simplify, come back to check your work. Welcome back. So the first thing we want to do is clear the square root symbol. I know that 8 times 8 is 64. Therefore, the square root of 64 is 8. Now we want to multiply. 3 times 8 is 24. So 11 subtract 24, we can rewrite to add the opposite. So two different signs. The absolute value of the largest is 24. So therefore, I know that my sum will be negative. So 24 subtract 11 is 13, and I know it's negative 13. Now let's use our square roots to solve an equation. 
Square roots get their name from perfect squares, so squares have all four sides are equal. We're told that the area of this square is 121 square inches. We also know that the area of a square is side times side or side squared. So we're going to replace the area with 121. We're given that the area of this square is 121, and that equals s squared. So going back to what we know about solving an equation, we know that whatever we do to one side, we must do to the other. So we're going to take the square root of both sides, because these are both perfect squares. 11 times 11 is 121. s times s is s squared. So the square root of 121 is 11, and the square root of s squared is s. So therefore, I know that the side of the square is 11 inches. Remembering that square root and talking about perfect squares comes from the fact that squares have four equal sides and the area is found by multiplying side times side or side squared. Your turn. I would like you to use what we just learned. Go ahead and pause the video and find the side length of the square. Good luck. Welcome back. So area equals s squared. We're given that the area is 144, so we replace a, the area, with 144. I'm going to take the square root of both sides. Whatever I do to one side, I must do to the other. The square root of 144 is going to be 12, because 12 times 12 is 144, and s times s is s squared. So I have 12 equals s. Therefore, the side of the square is 12 centimeters. There you have it. I hope you understand square roots a whole lot better now, and I hope you'll come back soon to join me on a learning how to approximate square roots. Thanks for joining me at The Magic of Math, where we master math one video at a time. I hope you'll subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Have a great day.